with my whole heart and me and my answer. One more time when your spirit, when your spirit tell him with my whole heart and my answer will be yes. I'm telling you right now, yes, Lord. 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 Uh, somebody's got to mean that. Yes. Yes, 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 to the book of Isaiah chapter 1 as you rest on your feet everybody everywhere Isaiah chapter 1 and let us receive the word of the Lord into our hands and into our heart Isaiah chapter 1 verse 5 verse 6 Shout glory. glory. Why should you be stricken anymore? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot even under the head there is no soundness in it but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burnt with fire. Your land, strangers devour it in your presence. And it is desolate as of a throne. By strangers. Song of Solomon, chapter 7. Chapter 7 of the Song of Solomon. Verse 5. Verse 6. Thine head upon thee is like Carmel, and the hair of thine head like purple. No, this is not punk rock. The king is held in the galleries. How fair, how pleasant art thou, O love for delight. God speaks to the children of Israel in Isaiah, he says, your head is sick. When God is speaking about this woman, he says, your head's like Carmel. So God has a question for you tonight. Where's your head at? Look at the person beside you and ask them, where's your head at? Just before you see seated, lift your hands and worship him one more time in this house. Ah, uh, just because he's good. Come on, we're entering into worship. And 
enter into worship. Hallelujah. 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 I love you. 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 You're so good to us. I love you. You're so worthy. I love you. You're so kind. I love you. Amos chapter 3, verse 3. Very simple, but yet profound question is asked by the prophet through the inspiration of God to Israel. Amos chapter 3, verse 3. The question. Can two walk together? Accept, everyone say accept. Accept they be, everyone say agreed. And so he tells us people cannot come into unity, unity, you and I, time. Cannot come into unity until we be of the same mind. And so God says, whoever you're thinking like, that's whether it's be God or Satan, that's who you're walking with. You can Yamaha, Kawasaki, and Honda one moment and be biting your nails and worry and fear the next moment. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, what happens many times with God's people is they vacillate. Huge vacillations. One moment. They are speaking the praises and the things of God. And the next moment, they are now worried, fearful, anxiety, and struggling. We watch as Jesus dealing with Peter. When he says to his disciples, who do men say that I am? And Peter answers him by saying, thou art the Christ. Let me let you see it so you know what we're talking about. Well, let's come to the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew, chapter 16. Verse 15 is the question. Matthew, chapter 16, verse 15 is the question that Jesus asked. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? 16, Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus looks at him and says, Well, flesh and blood didn't give you this. You got this from my Father. This is a straight, bona fide revelation. Right from the throne of the Almighty. That's powerful. Then he says in verse 18, I say unto thee, thou art Peter. Peter means you're a stone, you're a pebble. But upon this rock, not Peter, because you're a pebble. But this rock is the revelation you just received about me. I'll build my, not ours, my church. I don't care how much effort you put into it. 
it's all God's. Uh, that's why you got to watch getting territorial. I'm glad you like to come to church and sit in a certain seat, honey, but don't get territorial with the seat. Someone comes and sits there. You, uh, excuse me. Glad to have you. You mind scooting over? I always sit here. You love me when it's over. And so he said in verse 19, then he talks about, I give you keys. All this is very powerful. But then just a few verses down from this, verse 23, but he turned and said unto Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense. Now how did you just go from getting this revelation that Jesus states came from my father and you were just given keys to the kingdom. And now Jesus got to look with you with your keys in your hand and your revelation in your heart and say, Satan, you are an offense to me. See, that's God's kids. One mo more moment, they are a mixture of stardust and mud. One moment, climbing the star, star, star set steps of glory. The next moment, down in the mire of depression and self-pity and anxiety. One moment, shouting and dancing. The next moment, oh, I'm going to pay my bills. One moment proclaiming that Jesus loves me and that's enough. The next moment going, I want a husband so bad. If I could just get a husband before the rapture. Oh God. <laughs> just, just extremes. Well, <laughs> now you understand Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. And um, verse 22, 23. Uh, <clears throat> Galatians 5, 22, 23. But the fruit of the Spirit, everyone say is. is. Notice it's not are because it's not plural. It's not fruits of the Spirit, it's fruit, singular, therefore it is. If it was fruits, it are. All of this is one, all these are components that make up one fruit. Fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Then he says meekness and what? Temperance speaks of balance, self-control. Stop this pendulum. One moment you're testifying on the roof, the next moment you're living in the basement. One moment you're talking about how powerful your God is and how he'd make a way out of no way. The next moment you're not sure if you can make it. One moment you're talking about how he took Daniel out of the lion's den and how he struck them to his people and brought them through red seas and fed them with man on high. And the next moment you're going, I can't take much more of this. I'm going to hurt somebody. I'm going to go postal up in here. I'm getting ready to stamp somebody. extremes. Listen to Paul explain it to us. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 13. We'll, we'll actually look at verse 12 just for a moment. 
verse 11 tells us that he gave some apostles. Everybody say some. some. He gave some apostles. Do apostles still exist? You better bet you a bottom dollar they do. Apostles. He gave some prophets. He gave some evangelists. And he gave some pastors. And he gave some teachers. Fivefold ministry. The apostle governs. Prophet guards. The evangelist gathers. The pastor guides. And the teacher grounds. So he says, this was all given to you for the perfecting, which means the maturing of the saints of God. The fivefold ministry is God's gift to the church to grow you up. You know, have you ever noticed something in all, of all the miracles that Jesus did? There is one miracle I never saw him do. I never saw him take a baby and lay hands on him and grow him to a full man instantly. As miraculous as he is, and as miraculous as he can be, there are certain miracles he doesn't normally perform. And that's one of growth. Growth is process, not instantaneous. See, we normally want him to blow us up. I want to come to the altar and, and the Holy Ghost just blows me up. And da -da -da -da, I'm super Christian. able to stop a single doubt with one hallelujah. <laughs> able to leave over financial pressures with my faith. He doesn't blow you up. He grows you up. Amen. So Paul said, I want you to understand the purpose of the fivefold ministry is to grow you up and to set you in your ministry and to edify you. Edify meaning to build. We get our word edifice. But listen to this. Verse 13. Till we all come into the unity. Everybody say unity. Amen. We come into the unity of the faith. And of the knowledge of the Son of God. Unto, and we'll say a perfect man. Perfect man meaning mature. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we henceforth be no more children. What is the attribute of childhood that you're talking about? Tossed. Two and four. You're a swinging pendulum. You're a child. You go by your moods. See, a child goes by how they feel. I don't feel like doing homework. That's why the parent has to make them. Okay, either you're going to do this or we're going to apply the Board of Education to the seat of learning. A child goes by what they feel. An adult, it's not that an adult doesn't feel. Can I see the hands of you that work? You work a physical job? Wonderful, thank you. Can I see now see the hands of you that want to go to work every day? I mean, you feel like it. You just feel like going every day? Boy, I want to know your secret. Please talk to me. Because <laughs> most of us don't feel. But can I see the hands of you that even though you don't feel like going to work, you go? See, that's an adult. An adult doesn't go by what they feel. An adult goes by what is right. So an adult allows what is right to override what they feel. While a child is overridden by their feelings and overrides what's right. The adult knows it's right to go to work. I owe, I owe, so off to work I go. <laughs> da -da 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 I owe, I owe. Oh. And so an adult goes and works because they know it's right. right. That's the way it is with a spiritual adult. A spiritual adult does not simply pray because they feel. They pray because they know it's. So I don't feel like it. I'm not in the mood right now to pray. You never been that way? 
you never, amen, know, okay, well, I should go pray right now, but man, I don't feel like it. Have you ever gotten down on your knees and start to pray? And, hallelujah. Jesus. You think if you say the word slower, more time will pass. How long are you going, Well, an adult will do what is right. I, I don't even seem like I'm making connection with God, but I'm going to keep praying. Amen. Tell somebody, don't stop praying. Don't stop the old saints used to tell us, if you pray, you can stay. If you fast, you'll last. And if you read, you'll leave. So, Paul said, don't be a child and swing with moods. <laughs> That's why some of us are struggling, because you, you, when you get up in the morning, you get up on the wrong side of the bed. For some of you, there's a problem. Your bed's up against the wall, and you only see that it's always the wrong side. <laughs> for some of you that are married, you get out the same side of the bed every morning, but it just tends to be the wrong side. And for, For others of you, your mentality in the morning is give me coffee and no one gets hurt. <laughs> Ain't nothing no Starbucks can't cure. <laughs> Duncan, because I can do it. <laughs> Duncan Donuts, I can do it. What happens is God is trying to get right down to fundamentals. That when you're a child of God, you control your moods and you're not controlled by your moods. So I get up and I don't feel happy today. I feel miserable. Have you ever asked someone how you're doing? Meh. Well, what's wrong? I don't know. <laughs> Okay, did you eat? Yeah. How was it? Yeah, it's okay. Anything exciting in your life? Not really. You have a pulse? <laughs> See, what God is trying to say is the enemy comes and throws, everyone say, fiery darts. Let's, let's, let's look at that because it's imperative that we see these scriptures. A lot of these scriptures we know, but it's good for you to see them and let them digest down into your spirit. Go to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. And uh, verse 16. Verse 16 of Ephesians chapter 6. Above all. Everyone say above all. Above, above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to, everyone say quench quench the fiery darts of the wicked. Now, this is what an adult does. It's not that an adult does not have crazy thoughts. It's that an adult extinguishes the thoughts that are not correct. So God says to you, when you're a spiritual adult, you will override the times that you don't even want to praise me. You don't want to read my word. You don't want to come to church. But you'll come because you know it's right. And so you don't just praise me when you come to church. But from the rising of the sun to the going down of the... Church is not where I start the praise. Church is where I continue it. The reason why many of you are struggling is you start your praise here and end your praise here. So if there's no service, there's basically no praise. And, and, and if there is no sermon, there's no opening of your Bible. This is why God marvels at us because he gives us such phenomenal technology. Aren't you thankful for the technology? 
My God, what did we ever do without cell phones? Let me tell you what we did. We prayed. <laughs> yeah, we didn't call folk for help. We called Jesus. We didn't call AAA. Some of us were too poor to have it. We weren't poor, we poor. We couldn't pay for the rest of the OR. <laughs> we only had the PO. <laughs> Just public. So public, we couldn't pay attention. Couldn't pay for attention. Couldn't pay attention. So he, he wants you to understand that 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 when you become an adult, you extinguish thoughts. You decide how you're going to think. And you make it clear to the devil, I'm not your puppet. And I'm not your little plaything. Don't come up here and jump and trash up in my head and think it just, you won't walk away like you did nothing. You don't just come up in my head and try to tell me I'm nothing and a nobody. I think you want to just dance around me and not get slapped. Because I'll praise them so hard till I shake the corridors of hell. Give somebody a high five and tell them I know who I am. So you, you, you can't play this with me. You can't play this with me. I, I'm a king's kid. I'm, I'm like my daddy. Just like my daddy. I think like my daddy. I interpret the things of life like my daddy. I talk like my daddy. I act like my daddy. If you've seen me, you've seen my daddy. Hallelujah. 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 Because I bear the image and the likeness of my. Hallelujah. 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 He says, because hence no more children tossed to and fro. And did you hear what he said? Well, come back to Ephesians 4, because we got to finish that portion again in Ephesians 4. Listen to what he said in verse 14, that we hence will be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men, cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Verse 15, but speaking the truth in love may grow up. He said, I'm telling you the truth, and I'm telling it to you in love. You need to grow up. Amen. What are you trying to say? In other words, stop being controlled by the teachings of your enemy. Doctrines, dogma, teaching, instructions of your enemy. Can I tell you what the Lord told me to tell some of you? He said, you are too nice to the devil. While you mean to God, yeah, to God, and to your brother and sister. He said, how am I mean to God? Well, let me explain it to you. You know how some kids are. You don't give me what I want, I'm going to hold my breath. And that's why you tap them a lot of times on the bottom to make them breathe. And what some of you do is when you're not in the house of God and things are going well, and you don't like what's happened, you hold your breath, which means with everything that has breath, you hold your praise. Amen. Amen. This is why God's got to let some situations tap you.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh huh. All of a sudden, your child's sick. Now, you didn't want to, you know, you sat in church like a statue, you didn't want to pray. Now, your child's sick. All of a sudden, honey, you're the first one to pray. Used to come to church late and leave early. Now, you're the first one coming and the last one to leave. Oh, Jesus. Speaking the truth in love, he said, I would that you would grow up. Grow up means I want you to become stable now. Quit letting these fiery darts of the enemy just push you around. Quit letting the devil just shove you like you've got no backbone. And you don't ever shove back. Quit letting the devil, because what happens to many of you is you're a lamb to the devil. You're a lamb. The devil says no one loves you. I know. The devil says you're a failure. It's true. So he just makes lamb chops out of you. With no resistance. Some of you don't even make the devil sweat. There's no resistance. He just lay down ever so with a spirit of cooperation. Now God says, I called you this mission, you can do it. Uh-uh, no I can't. Anything God says, you fight. Anything the devil says, you lay down. And you believe what the enemy says about you more than you believe God. In fact, you have determined that it is actually humility to believe bad things about yourself. May I tell you, that's not humility, but stupidity. That's putting it nicely. So, why? Because you're contradicting the one that made you. And you're agreeing with the one that's trying to kill you. All under the banner of humility. And what God is saying is, is there anybody in the house that will not allow the enemy to make them a trash can? You, know, you don't just throw this garbage into my head. You don't just keep bringing up my past and expect me to cower in guilt and shame because obviously you don't know me and I need to introduce myself. Because if you go reaching for my past, I'm reaching for my weapons and it's all. I'm gonna reach for the sword of the spirit. I'm gonna reach for my praise. I'm gonna reach for my worship. I'm gonna reach for my song. I'm gonna reach for my testimony. I'm I'm gonna reach for my shout. I'm gonna reach for my pants. You all just gonna walk up in here, pull that out of the blood of Jesus, and expect me to sit there with the blood dripping off of it and not do nothing. I'm gonna smack your hands like a child that stole some cookies from a cookie jar. Put it back. Shout hallelujah. God's asking you the question of where's your head at? What's happening? Can I, can I tell you something? I, I, I'm sure you've asked God these questions. I, I know I have. <laughs> God, what's going on with the apostolic church? Why is it that it seems like the cruismatics who can just cruise in and cruise out are the blessed ones? And why is it that it seems like God's people struggle. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, take a closer examination upon my kids. He said, whatever I give them by one service, they have normally lost it by the next service. 
So I am never able to build. I only am in the business of restoration. I always have to give them back what they lost. Again and again. I just gave them joy. They come to service. They got no joy. I just gave them peace. They come back to service. They got no peace. I just gave them strength. They come back to service. They have no strength. So I'm always having to replenish and restore what I gave them. And therefore, I can't build. He said, the tragedy is that those that do not possess the full doctrine many times believe me more. Those that we look at that say need more understanding, what they do understand, they believe. They believe heavy in faith. They believe heavy in the gifts of the Spirit. They believe heavy in the power of God. And they're trusting God for millions. And he's delivering. Well, we've never got past hardly an electric bill. Why? It's where your head's at. Because when there's struggles and trials, you're still not sure whether he's going to show up or not. Yeah. I'll never forget I was at this one church you know sometimes I just look at God and go help me <laughs> quick <laughs> because his kids can make you want to do throat ministry <laughs> his kids make you want to do carpet ministry <laughs> Maybe if we rub your face long enough till you get a rug burn, you might get a clue. You say, are you saying they're stupid? No, no, no. I'm saying they just keep vacillating. I, I was asking God, I said, you know, why aren't we seeing more miracles? He said, son, miracles are not the problem. He said, miracles don't in themselves make people live for you. And I was at this church, and he, of course, you know God, he knows how to prove his point. I was at this church, and this man began to tell me about how he fell from so many stories up, broke his back, never meant to walk again, supposed to be dead, and how God, in five years, got him up out of that wheelchair, and he is just as strong. You would never know the man was ever in that condition. But then when you're in service and you look at the man, he don't hardly even praise. He just sit there. If he lifts his hands like this and says a few hallelujah, he getting deep. I looked at this brother man and said, listen, y'all, you and I need to talk. Because I'm ready to hurt you. God does a miracle for you like this, and you're going to sit there like you're the Statue of Liberty holding a torch? You ought to be the loudest thing in the house, the fastest thing in the house. God said, said see, miracles don't make people serve me. He's got documentation that he is a medical miracle. He's been written up in medical journals. Sits on the front seat many times. And I'm telling you that many times you just look over and go, God, look, I'm going to help you out. <laughs> Brother, I need some help. I'm going to help you out. <laughs> just, just let me grab him by the nose. Just let me pull him up. At least we'll get an ouch. That's a start. There'll be some volume.
God said, the problem is, where's your head at? I can do miracles for you. I can deliver you. I can heal you. I can open doors and make ways for you. That doesn't make you praise me. And what happens with many people is you'll praise me once or twice, and then you're ready to move on to the next problem. But have you praised me half as much as you've asked me? Where's your head at? How is it that you think? What, what kind of thinking process do you really gather? What kind of thinking process do you really have? See, what the Lord is trying to say is, I'm looking for people. I don't need the strongest. I don't need the best. He told Israel, I chose you because you're the few and you're the least. I don't need the most proficient preacher. I don't need, need the most prolific preacher. I don't need the greatest singer. They may not call you Amy Grant. Maybe they call you Amy Grunt. <laughs> Give me somebody that will worship than somebody that can sing. Y'all gotta help me. I need prayer. I just need prayer. What was that? We're trying. Thank you. Thank you. Because I watch. I watch many times, I go to churches all over, and I watch people sing and praise God from the pulpit and play instruments, and then you watch them hit their seat. And sometimes I just sit there going, hmm, 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 hmm. Remembering what they did up here, seeing what they're doing down there. Hmm, hmm. Somewhere from walking down the steps, something drops, so I'm trying to see if I can find it to give it back to them. and tell them, my God is amazing. Come on. My God is amazing. 
He's got amazing grace. He's got amazing mercy. You better be glad God ain't a man because your little carcass get torched. Mine too. Because we moody. We, we can be too moody with God, just too fickle. And that's why God's trying to ground us. You know what happens to us? It just doesn't take much to steal our joy or praise. It just doesn't take much. Somebody cuts you off while driving. Oh, you got it. <laughs> oh, you lost it. You go to call the person every name but the real name. Not that you knew their name, but that didn't make no difference. Your Nimrod. <laughs> Go to talk to them like they hear you. <laughs> Get your license and a bubble gum, gum, bubble gum machine? What is this? <laughs> some of you are funny. You really are. You're very funny. Because when you hit, when you get in the car, you put your Holy Ghost on the corner. You pick them up and set them there. Nice Holy Ghost. <laughs> I'll pick you up when I'm done driving. You go to drive. Road rage. Get out my way. Yelling at folk, looking at folk crazy. Crazy thoughts. Someone tries to cross the street. Ooh, Jesus. Help my friend. Because I feel a bump under my car. Obviously, this person thinks they got bumpers, so I'm about ready to show them. in front of my car like you crazy like that. <laughs> so you know what you say? I'll just go close enough to him to scare him. <laughs> Where's your head at? <laughs> God said, I, just, I need you to think like me. And, and, and stop this there's a yo-yo going on. You pick up my mind, you pick up the devil's mind. Make up your mind. You see, some of you don't understand. Your old man, the Bible calls your carnal nature the old man, which you buried in the waters of baptism, he's dizzy. He don't know whether he's up or down. Because it depends on your mood. Somebody bother you? Oh. Get up. Oh, get up. <laughs> oh, no, you got to get up. We got to talk to this. Get up. So we about telling what bus to get on and what stop to get off. Get up. Mama didn't raise no fools. Don't get me started now. Because I, I, you know, I'm saved, but don't push it. God said, I need you to grab my mind and keep it all day long. <laughs> Say yes. Come on, throw your hands up and open up your mouth again and just give him some praise up in this house. Praise him like you know where your head's at. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Aren't you glad he loves us? Come to the book of Deuteronomy a moment. I just want you to see something. Come to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8. How many know that it's good for us to bless our food before we eat it? How many know that? Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Well, let me just say this. We've all done this. Sometimes we just go ahead and just eat. We weren't even thinking about it. We just ate. You never done that? Yeah, yeah, I've done that. Once or twice. All right. You'd be commended. That's wonderful. I've done that. You know, you go ahead and you just eat. And then sometimes, you know, God, God is gracious. He reminds you. While you, while you smacking a stereo, God go, hello, remember me? 
And you go, oh yeah. Bless this food, Lord. Um, you say that I already ate, that I'm yet eating, and will eat. And he's gracious enough to deal with you. Isn't that good? He loves you. He loves us. He helps us. He ministers to us. He got no problem with dealing with us and helping us to go along our way. We may trip and stumble a little bit and fall, but if we just keep the mind that we want to please him and that we want to do what's right, he will help us. just throw this one in here for free. Verse 10. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 10. When, everyone said when. When, when thou hast eaten it not full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God. He said, don't just bless me for the food you're going to eat. Bless me after you're full. Amen. Yeah, where's your head at? When, you know, when you sit back and go, can't believe I ate the whole thing. <laughs> you know, you know what you said to yourself. I'm just going to have one little piece of cake. I can handle a little more. Well, you know. And before you know it, half the cake gone. <laughs> All right, he said, he said, <laughs> other than the temperance part, he said, bless me. Bless me for, for you having the ability to be full. You know what I'm trying to tell you? A lot of people eat and can't hold their food down. They throw up or they, their enzymes don't digest. And therefore, they don't know what it is to have enough food either to make them full or for their body to, decom to break down the food to let them know a full feeling. He said, so if you know what it is to be full, you need to bless me. Anybody know what it is to be full? Someone lift your hands. Just bless them for it. Bless him for being full. Come on, you know you're going to go out and eat some food after church. And bless him for letting you get full. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 I'm so glad I know what it is to be full. Amen. Now come back with me and let me begin to pull this all together from the book of Isaiah because the Lord wants to state here some of what the problem is. Oh, God's not trying to condemn you. That's why a spoonful of sugar make the medicine go down, Mary Poppins. He is simply trying to help you to make you realize that I'll work with you if you'll just keep your head straight and quit letting the devil play these games. Every time something goes wrong, you act like it's the end of the world. You know what many of us, that's why we're called children of God. Have you ever, have you ever dealt with children? And, and their doll broke, the child, the little girl's doll breaks. Oh my God, you thought someone killed the child. Screaming, yelling, hollering, face red, vision blurred by tears. And, and they're holding to the doll because it's their favorite doll. And, and, and I broke my doll and, and you know, they're just screaming. And you say to them, honey, come here. Give me the doll. Now, I can't, I can't help you if you keep your hands on it. But if you let go of it, I can fix it. And so they release the doll into your care. Sometimes reluctantly, they get all up in your grill, all up in your face, because they want right next to you. They want to be right next to the action. They don't want you to try doing nothing funny. And then you just take the arm and pop right back in. Say, so see, honey, here. It was so easy for you to fix, while it was, for them it was the end of the world. And you tell them, next time, honey, just come to me. That's what's going on between you and God. You're screaming like it's the end of the world. Every time there's a problem or a situation. And God's going, just come to me. But when you come to me, be prepared to take your little hands off it. And give it to me. And I can fix it. Without a problem. 
say yes. Chapter 1 of Isaiah, listen to this. <laughs> verse 6, or verse 5, he says the whole head is sick. Verse 6, from the sole of the foot even to the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. In other words, he said the problem that many times is happening in the house of God is the devil has wounded you by a series of events over time so that now you have no soundness. You are only controlled by your hurt and by your wounds. And you're no longer controlled by my spirit. You're controlled by what someone did not do. You're controlled by the fact that the pastor went and prayed for other people. But now one of your relatives was sick and for some reason he didn't get over there to pray. And they died and now you're mad. So you're controlled by your own hurts and your disappointments. And there's no soundness in you. Because you're controlled by your pain rather than by God's power. What you have to decide is where am I going to put my head at? Am I going to put my head at the things of the enemy or come back and read again with me to Song of Solomon chapter 8 and see the differences? One head is sick in Isaiah chapter 1, but in Song of Solomon chapter 7, Song of Solomon chapter 7, verse 5, thy head upon thee is like Carmel. So what are you trying to tell me? The word Carmel means a fruitful field. So what he's telling her is, your head is a fruitful field, and your hair is purple. Purple means royalty. You are dignified. You act in a royal manner. So now where's your head at? Is your head sick because of wounds and disappointments so that there's no soundness in you? Or is your head, can God look at you and say, Carmel? Your hair is purple. You are the one that I can look at and tell the devil, attack them all you want to. They will not deny me. Let all hell break loose in their life, but they will glorify me. And even when they don't feel like they're getting what they want, and for long periods of time, they keep trying to do what is right. But while doing what is right, they don't seem to obtain what they want. They still will put their head in my lap. They still will wash their tears. With their tears, they'll wash my feet. They will look at me and say, you are the exceeding great reward of my life. And if I never get these things, Things. All I want is you. Tell somebody beside you, I want Jesus. That's why the songwriter said, take this whole world, but just give me Jesus. I want God to be able to look at me and say, your head's at Carmel. I want God to look at me and say, your hair is purple. It means you think like me. It means you talk like me. It means you act like me. It means you conduct your life like me. It means that when there's trouble in life and there's financial difficulty and you don't know know how you're going to make ends meet and you don't know how stuff is going to happen. You look up at God and say, my head is in this. I am your child. Touch your neighbor. Say, daddy's coming. Daddy's coming. I am your child. This is where my head's at. That even though I don't have the money to pay the bill, I will not cast away my confidence, which has great recompense of reward. For I just have need of patience. That after that, that I've done the will of God, I might receive the promise. For he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by Hold you. God said, how many times do I have to prove myself? Uh, how many times do I have to show up and deliver you uh, before you get your head straight? Uh, how many times does it take for me to make financial ways for you and heal your body and open doors for you before you finally look at the devil uh, and say, I know in whom I have believed uh, and I am persuaded. Uh, someone shout that he's able. 
I was able. Why is it I can do miracle after miracle? Why is it I can touch you time and time again? And all it takes is a sentence from the devil and it erases everything that I've done from you, done for you. Why is it all it takes the devil to say is I'm not coming and you break down and cry? Why is it that you believe this mess? How come you won't look the devil in the face and say you're talking about my Jesus and you better watch what you're saying because he is faithful shall he's faithful tell somebody beside you faithful God he is a faithful God uh, you know what God's marveling at some of you <laughs> because you see my friend this is why God's marveling at us because you see if somebody that we were good friends with if somebody else came up to them and started talking bad about us we would we would say well why didn't you defend me you know that's not me how come you didn't tell them what kind of friend are you that's what God's saying to you how come you always let the devil bad mouth me to you and you don't ever not so. That's not my God. The devil says he's going to leave you. You point your finger in his face and say, not so. He will never leave me. Oh, Jesus, never leave me alone. He'll never leave me alone. Never leave me. Throw your hands up a moment and love Never leave me. Never leave me. Never leave me. Never leave me. Does he have to allow tragedy in your life before you'll start to really praise him and seek him? Where's your head at? For some of you, the only way God's going to really get you is by letting something happen to your child or let some tragedy happen in your life that's going to finally bring you to your knees. But it didn't have to be like that. If you just would have praised him and worshipped him because you loved him. If you just would have pursued him because you wanted him. But because you would not pursue him because you wanted him, that he's causing you to pursue him because you need him. Hallelujah. But friend, when your head's at the right place, you tell God, I don't want to just serve you in tragedy. I don't want to have passion in pain. I want to have passion out of love. I don't want it to be just because there's difficulty. Now I'm going to get committed. I want to be committed because I love you. What's going on with us? Why is it that many of you, the only time God can really hear from you is if you're in debt, if you've got pain, if there's trouble. Now you make prayer. Now you talk to God. But as soon as you're out of debt, as soon as you got the man or the woman you want, as soon as you've been blessed, now you hardly pray. Now you don't got time for church. Once he blesses you, now you don't got time for him. What's up with that? Where's your head at? What are you thinking? Does anybody realize I need thee? I need you. I love you. I need you. I need you. I need you.
I need you. I need you. I need you. your attention. What is it going to take to finally have you relinquish control to him? Can I tell you what the Lord said? The Lord said some of you, if you get angry at the devil as much as you do at God, you'd be powerful. as soon as you pray and don't get what you want. What am I praying for? Get disappointed? Get angry? Don't want to talk to God no more? God said, how come you don't do that to the devil? He ain't answered nothing for you. He ain't helped you. How come you don't get mad at him? How, how, come, how come you're always so nice to him? Swallow everything he says. Why do you act like he's your friend? You know he's trying to kill you. And some of y'all funny. You're funny. Straight up, all day long, funny. You'll come to counseling, you'll come deal with the pastor, go to talk, come talk to somebody. And this is what you'll start saying. I know it's the devil, but you rewind. You know it's the devil. I know it's the devil. I know I should be praising him, but I just, I, I know, but you know it's the devil. And swallowing this. Say it out your mouth. You know it's the devil. You know it's the devil. Anyone home? You know it's the devil? You just want to go knock, knock, knock on the forehead. Anybody home? You know it's the devil. Does the elevator reach to the top floor here? You know it's the devil? If you're missing aces in your deck, do you know it's the devil? You know it's the devil. Do you know who the devil is? Yeah, he's a liar. You ask the person. Yeah, he's a liar. He's a liar? And you know it's the devil. Okay, I'm confused. <laughs> you know the devil lies to you. And you believe it. But it sounds so logical. In whose world? Who's it logical to? Remember, there's a supernatural world, there's a natural world. What logic are you going by? And why won't you believe God? Why the one that pierces through with his hands, spills blood for you, takes the beating on his back, took on flesh, dies for you, him you struggle to believe? He says you're mighty. You look, start looking behind you, like who are you talking to? I'll help you find them, God. The devil says you just never, you be, you're just like your no good daddy. It's all true. And you know, some of you are amazing. You have so let the devil convince you that because your past was horrible, your present and future have no potential. You are not judged from where you're coming from. You're judged to where you're going to. You may not have had a good father or a good mother. You may not have had all things together the way they should have been in your life. But God specializes in mending broken pieces and broken households and broken lines. The potter can put you back together again. You that are broken, stop by. Potter's house. Why do you, what, how many believe he's almighty? Then how come you keep acting like your past is greater than him? My mistakes are greater than you, God. You can't forgive me. You can't use me. You can't, you, you can't ever make me what I need to be because my faults, my failures are greater than you. 
He calls you to speak, and you tell him, I can't speak. You got the wrong person. I hope you find, find the right one, though. Real sweet of you. He, he says, I called you to sing. Uh, <clears throat> um, God, I hate to inform you, but I'm too, I'm too scared to do that. I'll wet myself. Why is it that you believe the enemy that tells you that you're going to fail? And some of you, you're afraid to sing, afraid to do, because I'm going to sing off key. I'm not going to do it right. So let me understand this correctly. You not doing something right can overshadow the power of God. Your failures are greater than his power. So if you sing off key, God's lost. Give him a GPS. Buy it for him for Christmas. Are you telling me that God's not greater than your faults and failures? Is he almighty? Then why do you present your faults and failures like they are almighty? You don't understand God. I don't really pray. I don't really read the way I should. You know, you can't use me. God goes, can I change you? Can I help you? Then why do you keep confessing what the devil says about you? How come you keep telling me you can't pray? How come you keep telling me you can't read? How come you keep talking from the side of your flesh? And when will you start talking from the side of your spirit? Because there's a spirit in you that wants to pray. There's a spirit in you that wants to read. There's a spirit in you that wants to worship. How come you don't talk from the side of your spirit? There's a spirit in you that wants to obey me. There's a spirit in you that wants to do my will. How come you don't talk from that side? Why is it? Where's your head at? Come on, friend, don't just lift your hands. Open your mouth. If you just don't lift your hands, keep your mouth closed, you might as well just check your deodorant to still see if you're sure. Come on, Brother Ryan, tell him. Hallelujah. That's right. That's it, open up your mouth and worship him. Put your head into the things of God. Put your head into the things of God. Think like you're God. Think like you're God. Stop thinking like your enemy.
Would you reach out right now to your brother or to your sister? Lay hands on somebody beside you. Touch somebody. Reach for somebody. You're just going to pray with them. Would you pray that God helps them to put their head in the right place and keep it in the right place? Help me. Help my brother. Help my sister to think like that. Move spirits of suicide. Help them to think like that. Move this fear of failure. Help them to think like that.